Let's assume that you decided to make a game in Buildbox that has multiple touch movable objects. You drop your objects in the scene, then you go to Cube, and get a Is Touch, Touch Move, connect them together, adjust the sensitivity, turn off all rotation, click play, you click and move the biggest object, works fine. Then you click and move the smallest object, and you can notice right away that all three objects move at the same time. So the problem is, when you have multiple objects in a row, all of them get an Is Touch event, and you control all of them at the same time. This is Smart Penguins. One of our Patreon supporters asked how can we fix this problem. Thank you for everyone that is supporting. And in this video, we'll show you how to solve this problem. If you'll find this video helpful, like this video, subscribe to our channel. So let's dive in and see how we can solve this problem. Let's go to Buildbox, take a quick look at our scene. We have six objects. All of them are created from the same asset, just different scale. The asset is set to dynamic. Let's go inside and we have the is touch node connected to touch move. The reason that we have in this problem is due to how is touch node works. When you click on that screen, a ray from that point gets shot out to each object. The objects in front of them do not block the rays. So that's why when you click on the screen and if you have a hundred object in a row, they're all gonna get selected. So how to fix this problem, we need to somehow filter out the closest object to our screen. To do that, we'll have to create our own script. Let's go to our cube, drop the script. We made the script and instructions how to set up available at the website. There'll be a link in the description below. Let's go to that website. Here's the website. So requirements for this node is we need to have one input node and a touched output node. Let's select and copy the code. Go to build box, edit, paste the code in. Let's add the input and output. Let's rename the input and let's rename our script. Now let's break the connection between the isTouch node and the touch move and connect from isTouch to our newly created node and let's connect the touched output to the touch move node. Click play and now if we select the small one we can see that only that one gets selected and it starts moving. Same thing with other ones, we can move around, reorder them, and it's still the closest one to the camera gets moved. So that's how you can use that script to fix the problem. For those that are interested in how the script works, let's run through the script real quick. Let's go to our script. We have three variables, entity, camera, and touched flag. In our init, we set our entity variable to our entity and our camera variable to our camera. Let's skip update for now and let's go to signal. When we receive a signal to our node and the value is true and we calculate the distance between our entity position and camera screen ray origin. After that, we pass our entity and our distance to our, our closest function. If value of our input is false, we set touched to false and emit a signal false to our touched output. Our closest function is responsible to find out which of the objects is the closest to the camera. It does that by using a variable closest object that is saved in settings so we can access it globally. The logic here is if the setting closest objects is undefined, that means none of the objects from our screen were registered as touched. So we register this entity as our first object. We set our closest object to an empty object. In that empty object, we set the ant variable to this entity and our dist to the distance of this entity. If settings closest is defined and the distance is greater than the distance of this entity, that means that this current object is the closest one. So we want to replace the entity that is stored in our settings to this entity. And we do that by just setting the entity to entity and distance to distance. Else, that means that closest object is defined and the distance of the closest object is smaller than our current distance. So that means that our current object isn't the closest one that was touched. In that case, we set touch to false and we return. If one of these two conditions were true, then the touch gets set to true. Now in our update function, we're listening for touched flag. If touched flag is true, we go inside, set the touched flag back to false. Then we check if the setting closest entity equals to the current entity. If that's true, then we clear the settings closest object to prepare it for the next touch event and we emit signal true to our touched output. And that's the quick run through our script. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, click on the like button, 
subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions, write in the comments below.